send that song there out to uh, everybody who was injured and the three who died on the Amtrak crash that happened earlier this week up there in the, the wilds of northwestern Montana. Uh, that route, the train that crashed, was the Empire Builder mm -hmm. Amtrak route that runs from Chicago all the way to Seattle and or Portland, Oregon, and it's the one I was on. Uh, two months ago, uh, and it's really, or three months ago, I guess, and, you know, it's, it's a very sad thing, so. Our thoughts go out. Uh, so, this is the Giddy Gang Show, and we've got some pretty cool stuff lined up for you this week. I'm going to be making the, the trek, the long, arduous journey over to the, uh, the uh, Juke Shack workbench in the third or fourth or fifth half of today's show to do a live, uh, unrehearsed uh, retrofit of one of our new banjo kits, the Country Road Banjo Kit that so many of you have uh, invested in, and hopefully they're starting to arrive for you. Uh, earlier this week, Louis Lamana, who I think is out there at the moment, asked, hey, how would you, uh, how would you install a giddy bucker in one of those? Would you just, you know, pop it up there under the, the strings? I'd be, yeah, sure, no problem. And then I got to thinking, well, you know, I wouldn't mind one of these prototypes we have here in the studio having a giddy bucker pickup in it. So I figured, you know what? Why not just do it live? <laughs> We're gonna retrofit this completed uh, glued shut, because this was one of the prototypes before we realized we should glue the soundboard on, or I'm sorry, screw the soundboard on rather than glue it. This one's glued on, so I'm going to have to cut an access hole in the back. All sorts of good uh, things. Speaking of Northwest Montana, there's Rick Flink up there in the, the area, general area, where that train uh, had a little bit of trouble this week. So yeah, I'm going to be taking that four stringer and retrofitting a giddy bucker right into it. Plenty of room under the strings there to fit one of those low pri profile surface mount uh, giddy buckers in there, so that's going to be fun. We've got a new What's the Deal with Spiel video for you, in which I believe he's going to be talking about, uh, amongst other things, giving a guitar away. What? Yeah, that happens to have a giddy bucker in it. All sorts of good stuff going on. You know, I hear that Giddy Bucker's a really good pickup. I've heard that too. Is your microphone on there, Nicholas? It is now. Hey, there he is. There's Nick Lanciano behind the producer's desk over Hello. There. No <laughs> camera on him this week because camera two is miles from us, uh, pointed at the, uh, the Juke Shack bench that is anxiously awaiting. 
Show him the bench there, Nick. Okay, I can do that. He's, he's got some buttons to match. <gasps> there it is. It is anxiously awaiting me to make the trek over there. <laughs> There's our intrepid producer. <laughs> Uh, did you see, happen to see, hey, Chris McKinney out there, good to see you, buddy, long time no talk. Did you happen to see the video that Nick uploaded this week showing how to put this cool new banjo kit together? He worked long and hard on that video, had it all ready to go, and then we decide, hey, let's screw, the, let's screw the soundboard on instead of gluing it. So he had a little bit to redo, and I had a little bit to redo in the how-to guide. Yes, yeah, right. It's all sorted out, don't worry about it, it worked out. everything's great. So, uh, one more kind of slow and sad song for, uh, for the uh, people who perished in the train crash. You know, it's certainly not the first time a passenger train has crashed in the United States. It didn't take long from when, actually I think the first passenger train they ever tried to run went off the rails, didn't mm -hmm. it? That wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> so, yeah, this, uh... Indeed, you know, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna think I'm gonna be. It's not necessarily about a train, but kind of. Put a candle in the window. Short hair kale. Yeah. And he's got his popper with him. 
and he's got his doggo, and he's doing, what do you say, a to Tony Orlando song? Yeah, Candida. Candida. Mm -hmm. Boy, we're, we're breaking through all the barriers here today, so here's Kale. Well, howdy, folks. Happy Sunday morning. I'm out here in the forest with my dog, Dutchie, here. Duchess, we call her Dutchie. And I'm uh, going to do a little tune for you. And this particular tune, I'm going to tell you, this was sort of... Um, brought on by my buddy Doug. He leads a group called the uh, Spokane Cigar Box Guitar Slingers. And they did this song, I don't know, several weeks ago, they did a, a version of this song. But additionally, ever since I started doing Kazoo Fridays, Doug's been saying, I wanna see a video where you're playing Cigar Box Guitar and Kazoo at the same time. So I guess today is that video. Here's a little Candida for you. The stars won't come out if they know you're about cause they couldn't match in the glow of your eyes and me who am I just an ordinary guy and I'm trying hard to win that first prize oh my candida we could make it together Sunday morning. Say hi, Dutchie. Come here. Come here, Dutchess. Say hi. Uh, she's shy. Sunday morning. All right. Well, I've made the trek. I've made it over here to the Juke Shack workbench for a live how-to segment here. I'm going to take this four-string Country Roads banjo and retrofit into it a Giddy Bucker pickup. Now, this isn't just any Giddy Bucker pickup. This is something we just launched this morning. It was featured in the, the Nation newsletter that we sent out today. It is a, what we're calling a load and go harness. It is all pre-wired. You don't need to do any soldering. It's all nicely wrapped up here. <laughs> Uh, but basically, it uses bullet connectors, and if you've seen or used one of our uh, pre-wired Wicked Bucker harnesses before, it's the same concept. A red and a blue bullet connector, it plugs right in. Everything else is pre-soldered, so you don't have to do the soldering. So, uh, I am going to retrofit this banjo. I'm basically going to take one of our mounting rings and copper covers for the Giddy Bucker, 
Mount it right there under the strings in the neck position. Going to drill a hole, mount the, the volume pot and the uh, tone pot over here and the output jack over here and it's going to be a little tricky because this box ooh, that's going to be tricky this box is sealed up you know it uh there's no way to open it so i actually have to drill an access hole so i'm going to start with that because if i screw this up then we've got 42 minutes of show to fill <laughs> Uh, basically, I'm using a hole saw, and I'm going to cut a hole right in the back, in between where the sidewalls and the internal bracing is in this banjo. And I'm going to hope I don't hit anything. I'm going to hope it doesn't blam in and mess up the back of the banjo head. So we're, uh, Danny, you know running on faith? <laughs> <laughs> no. Lately I've been running on faith. <laughs> Woo! This is a dull hole saw. A smart person would do this at a drill press. Unfortunately, it's better. It's better TV if you do it. None of them were. No smart people were available for this segment today. So I'm doing it <laughs> in the dumbest way possible. All right. So I've got my access hole drilled now. And I can see the back of the banjo head, and I can see. It's going to take a little bit of finagling, but I can see where my pickup lead is going to come down through the soundboard because it's all pre-wired and I'm going to have to basically drill a hole and then get the lead from the pickup. Is there a, is there a knife or a cutter over there? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I mean, I can tear this too. I just, ah, go. You got to be very gentle with these giddy buckle pickups because those windings are potentially fairly easy to uh, mess up if you roughhouse with them. So we're going to be nice and gentle. And the Gibby Bucker lead, actually I should bring my phone over so I can see any comments. Well, it's a long trek back to the other side of the stage, just in case somebody asks something. Hey everybody, made it back. All right, put that over there. So, the giddy bucker, the way it's made, the magnet is on top, and I want that to be perpendicular to the strings, of course. And then the lead comes down off the bottom, and is going to go down through the box. So I'm just going to get an idea here, and my access hole... So I'm going to do it this way. My access hole is under here, on this side. So I want my lead to come down, and handily, positioning is easy because the pickup, the magnet sticks to the strings, right? All right, so I'm just going to make a little mark with a drill bit here that I want my lead hole to be about right there. And I don't need a very big hole for the lead. Um, so I'm going to, and I don't want to mess up my strings because my goal with this is to do this full retrofit without having to restring it. Uh, it looks like Philip Taylor is asking uh, what strings are, are on it. Is it the GDA each? Oh, this one, yeah, this one's strung a little special, Philip. Um, I did this one GDAE so I could play it like an octave mandolin. Uh, it's the same as the, normally it's the same as the four string people are. Right, which is a GDGB tuning by default. Now my hope, my goal, is that this hole I just drilled in the soundboard will end up being covered by the mounting cover, mounting plate of the Giddy Bucker. So I'm going, I've drilled my hole three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to work my bullet connectors down in one at a time and try to get them to go over the hump of the bracing so I'll be able to get at them from that access hole. Our needle nose might help with well, that. Well, I thought about that, but then I was like, ah. I'll be able to make it work. We'll just do it live. And as I said, this is not, uh, I didn't do a test run of this, so we're, we're kind of running, as I said, running on faith. All right, so the lead's down in there. I'm going to get the pickup gently worked under the strings, because wouldn't it, wouldn't it be my luck to get this all done? And then I messed up the pickup. <laughs> all right, so 
There, and now I've got the bullet connectors coming out the back. That's a good sign. Um, getting, getting the pots mounted into the, uh, into the body of the instrument is going to be interesting, if not possibly impossible. Um, but we'll see. I might have to drill a second access hole over here to be able to get at what I need to get at to get those because uh, you got to hold the body of the pot while tightening the uh, tightening these nuts to get them mounted in. Nick, did you find a, a little pair of pliers or something? Oh, I, was, I was looking for them. Yeah. Give me one second. Bust these uh, bust these pegs off of the pots. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to drill the holes for the potentiometers here on the front of the instrument. Mr. Caldwell. Hey, somebody's out there watching the show. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> he heard. He saw a friend in running just as a friend in need. <laughs> All right, so I busted those little. Uh, pegs off of the pots. You know what I'm talking about if you've ever mentioned or mounted one of these Borns pots. They have the little peg which is there. Those pegs on the pots are there. If you make a little divot for them to fit in, it will keep the pot from rotating if the nut ever gets a little bit loose. So you can you can leave them and make a divot if you plan ahead. I usually just break them right off. Louis saying don't put it too close to the bridge. That's it should be all right. Should be all right. Okay, so to drill for these pots, I believe a 5 16 inch bit will do. Yeah. And you don't want them too close together because you want room to turn the knobs once the knobs are installed. What if you did it on the sidewall? We well, it on the top. that's a six millimeter side. I'm going to do the jack down there. I do occasionally have a plan. Maybe not a good plan. Of course, in post-production, in editing, will edit in me wearing all of the uh, safety stuff I'm supposed to be wearing. All right. So what I want to do before going any further to protect that pickup is to get the mounting ring and the cover plate on it so it's not getting banged around here on top of the instrument. So I work the cover plate over it, or the mounting ring rather, and you can get these mounting rings when you order the giddy buckers. It's one of the add-on options. All right, make sure my magnet is perpendicular to the strings. That's important. And it's also important with these giddy buckers to make sure the magnet is facing up, not down. As we've uh, had some builders question us about, hey, why doesn't it, why is it so quiet? And then they send a picture like, oh, well, there's one good reason. The magnet has to interact with the strings. So I'm just going to screw down this cover here. I need a I need an extender for my oh. There's my number 1 bit. I know I had a fine tip Phillips bit here. But I don't have a uh, bit extender, so it's a little funky. But you know what? You make do with what you got. If you wait for everything to be perfect, you'll never get anything done. That's what I've always said. So this, with this nice copper cover that's laser cut from thin copper, 40.040 thick copper, it makes a nice, nice look on the top of the instrument. All right, so since I've already violated the back of this instrument rather significantly, I'm going to pop that second access hole. And again, if you were doing this, ideally you would be doing this uh, before you had the instrument assembled, right? Yeah. 
and the released version of the kit. If you bought one or if you're about thinking of buying one, the version you'll, you get is uh, the top's going to be removable. So even if you decide to retrofit it later, you'll be able to. All right, one more hole to drill for the jack. And for that, I'm going to use a bit that's not in this set. <laughs> a 3 8 inch bit. I wonder if Dan's still out there listening. Well, a half inch bit will work, won't it? Sure, why not? Maybe you grab them all but the one you need. The one, the one. All right, so half inch right through the side. Bang! <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, he's too slow that time! <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> hey, you want to come finish this segment for me? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Alright, so the output jack. Uh, now with this 6 millimeter plywood, it's right on the edge of what the uh, these long shaft jacks can, uh, can handle, but it just was enough to get the thread started. And I'll get it tight enough with these needle nose pliers. Tight enough for show business at least, huh? And then the real challenge, getting those pots installed. It should be easier now with this second access hole. All right, that's tight enough. Now, is there enough room where I drilled? Because I was, of course, just uh, just kind of eyeballing it. I should have just enough room to fit these pots in. I'm gonna get them through the front. Now the tops of these banjos are three millimeter. So even the pots with the shorter threaded portions of their shaft, like these Borns pots we use, which are a higher quality potentiometer than what you see on the Econo harnesses that we sell for wicked cheap. For this kind of stuff, I like using these better ones, Borns pots. You know, because the Giddy Bucker is made in the USA, right downstairs here at, uh, beneath Giddy headquarters, the we cut the mounting rings, the cover plates are all made here, the harnesses are soldered here. So I figure if we're going to make a higher end part, or a higher end thing like this harness, we might as well use higher end parts in it, right? Now unfortunately, the Borns pots aren't made in the US. I honestly don't know of any um, any potentiometers still being or currently being made over here. There might be some, but I don't know of them. So it's snug in there up against that banjo. I may have slightly miscalculated, but only slightly. <laughs> there we go. Hey, look at that, you know? Where well, there's a will. Or at least enough stubbornness, there's always a way. And of course, my goal with this is once I get all of this installed, I want to plug this thing in to the amp over there and we'll see how she sounds, right? Okay, get that nut started. There we go. Helps if you push on the right thing. Okay, get that tightened down, and then it should be a matter of just connecting those bullet connectors. Assuming I didn't yank on anything too hard. <laughs> I don't feel like I did. Get the wires down in there, and of course I can use a cover plate to cover up these two holes I made in the back of this banjo if I so choose. So these bullet connectors are, I know you can't really see, but they're wicked easy. The red male goes in the red female, the blue into the blue. She's connected. 
and this is suddenly even close to being in tune still. If everything works properly, I'm going to make the trek back over and we're going to plug her in and see. Ooh, it's a long way to Tipperary. Danny, you're on camera. Hey, Smile. you're up. <laughs> Good thing he had his pants on. <laughs> yeah, this time. This time. <laughs> All right, so here's my amp. I didn't put any knobs on right now. I'll do that after the fact. Sounding promising. Don't know if she's still in tune. Oh, something's happening, people. You can feel that on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. isn't cranked on this because it sounds like it is. <laughs> Bring that back a little bit. Isn't that how it should be? On a banjo? No. <laughs> um, yeah. So that sounds that sounds really cool. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, and it's got the tone control. So listen, this is with the tone control turned all the way, what would be all the way up. All the way down. It trims some of those highs, some of those trebles off. I'm going to leave that about midway. Um, Shane's over there screaming about distortion. I don't even own a distortion pedal, Shane. What you talking about? Um, I do have a little bit of reverb on there, a little bit of compressor and chorus. Uh, but yeah, that's... Now, the cool thing is, well, I don't know if it's cool, but the reality of it is the electric pickup, the Giddy Bucker pickup in here, and you can... It's, it's not really... Uh, um, microphonic at all, which is nice. Um, but it's reacting to the strings. The magnet is magnetizing the strings. The strings are vibrating over the coils. 
that's creating the current that gets passed off to the amplifier, it doesn't really care at all about the, the banjo sound that this drum head makes. So what's coming through the amplifier kind of sounds like an electric guitar, you know? But it's very difficult sitting here hearing that and playing. You hear the acoustic effect of the banjo with kind of that electric guitar effect behind it. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. So that is live retrofitting a Giddy Bucker pickup using the new load and go harness. If I had been over there at that bench with a pile of parts and a soldering iron, I'd still just be getting started. Yeah. You know, like, oh, we gotta, you know, sand the back of the pot and get that to stick and then get the capacitor on there. With the load and go Giddy Bucker harness, all of that has been done for you. So if you're not particularly confident with soldering or you just don't wanna and that's fine too you just don't want the hassle of soldering and uh potentially ruining parts because it's possible when you're soldering them uh, that's what the load and go harness is for now i just happened to see our own jimbo bird he's always out there thinking uh you could as he said mount a piezo pickup in here along with the giddy bucker and you could throw a blend balance pot in here and you could bring in some of the piezo to mix with the magnetic and hand off to the amp a really cool blend of that acoustic banjo sound with that more of a, a, a pure electric guitar tone behind it. Louie of course has been doing it forever. He knows what we're talking about. Oh, and speaking of Louie, oh, I had another chat with him earlier uh, this week. He's going to be starting a cool project. I don't want to give away too much unless he has already. Yeah, he's giving it in. Oh, he confidence. gave it away. <laughs> yeah, so converting the four-string version of the Country Roads banjo kit to a five-string. Mm -hmm. With that, that shortened drone string tacked on, it's going to be interesting to see how he tackles that, and then we'll probably talk with him about how he did it, and maybe make that an option for the kid. All right, enough of me gabbing and prattling on. Uh, how about that? What's the deal with Spiel? Let's see what Shane. Let's see what Shane's got to say this week. <laughs> Cigar Box Guitar Enthusiasts, Del Puckett here, and we, the people, we want to know, what's the deal with Spiel? Thank you, Del Puckett. What's the deal with Spiel? You know what I think the deal is? I think uh, I may have too many guitars. Uh, these are just some of them. Uh, you're not even seeing the ones that are at Spiel's Tavern uh, or others I have in my closet. But I've been <laughs> collecting for years and I think I'm starting to run out of room. So either I need to get rid of some guitars or I need a bigger house. So I tell you what, let's do something different. I'm going to put my phone on a holder right here. Boom. Put it. There we go. I'm going to start giving away some instruments. 
one a week, every Friday. For the next few Fridays, I'm going to give away an instrument. Uh, what has happened lately is I've been building a lot for CB Giddy. In fact, this is one of the guitars I made to test out his brand new Giddy Bucker pickups. <laughs> This one has a prototype, one of the very first Giddy Buckers made, and it's sunk in here on a Macanudo cigar box. I created his logo, and then I wood burned it on the fretboard. So it's a fretless three string electric cigar box guitar with volume and tone. I'm gonna give this away. Now, how do you win this guitar? Well, you go to youtube.com slash Shane Spiel youtube.com slash Shane Spiel and you will see some new videos of mine called Blues University. In these videos I am teaching you how to play the blues but in a way that beginners will be able to grasp each and every concept. So what I need you to do is go to youtube.com slash Shane Spiel look for the brand new Blues University videos like all of them, give them all a thumbs up, and post a comment in each one. When I see your name in the comments, I will be able to tell that you have entered this contest. So leave a comment in there, let me know what you think of the videos, what you would like to see me teach, or give a shout out, anything. Um, so go to youtube.com slash Shane Spiel, and like and comment on the Blues University videos. That is how I'm gonna choose a winner for the Giddy Bucker guitar. Now I will give this away October 8th. It will be announced uh, in the What's the Deal with Spiel next week on October 8th. I'll announce that winner and then I'm gonna announce how to enter the next contest and what that guitar will be. So I'm downsizing and I'm giving away guitars. Thank you for watching, and when you're on my YouTube, don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to have so many more videos coming. Thank you, CB Giddy, for all the cool kits that you've been sending me and uh, having me test out. And thank you all for watching. A lot of you all are going to get some really cool guitars. <laughs>
got to ride forever on that range up in the sky when horses snort and fire. string it. Uh, the strings that I chose for it to get GDAE <coughs> tuning, uh, that low G especially, it, it, it doesn't intonate correctly, quite correctly when fretted, so it sounds a little, a little off. Anyway, good work on that. Uh, Shane talking about his contest and giveaways and all the good stuff going on. And we're keeping busy here at CB Giddy. Uh, I don't know if you saw, there's a new product. If you go to the homepage of cbgiddy.com, and you click the new tab so you see the newest stuff in addition to the load and go giddy bucker harness no soldering required that's on there uh, we also added a new amplifier face you think I would have brought one in but I didn't um, aluminum it's laser cut from aluminum and you can use it to mount all of your amplifier parts that we sell and then drop it into a cigar box into all sorts of different things as a predefined unit and we're soon going to be offering those with all of the components pre-installed and pre-wired for a true load and go amplifier. So there's more coming from this load and go concept that we've been talking about. So we keep sending us your videos. Uh, Kale has been very good about it and of course Shane does a what's the deal with Spiel but We'd love to hear from you. Some fall greetings, uh, whether you just want to say hello, talk a little bit, show us your shop, show something that you've built recently. We would love to see videos of what our giddy gangsters and friends are out there doing throughout the week. Shane talking about books. I am working on, you know, we got the Sea Shanty songbook out recently, and that's doing really well. I'm working on the next one which is going to be the strummer version of my bluegrass and old time songbook. You know, I've got the complete bluegrass and old time uh, traditional music songbook, which is about that thick uh, with the cigar box guitar tab. Well, this version is going to be just the lyrics and the chords for strumming on any instrument, really. The chord forms show the guitar, you know, six string guitar chords, but um, a lot of people, like, me, if I go to a session or whatever and I'm going to play and sing something, I don't need the, I don't want the tablature. I'm not picking out the melody because if I'm going to sing a song like Danny was just doing, mm -hmm. he wasn't picking out notes. He wasn't picking a melody. He was strumming. Mm -hmm. Strumming the chords and singing along. That's what, that's what back porch, front porch, campfire, picking and grinning is all about usually you know strumming the chords so that's what these strummer songbooks are are all about and uh yeah there's a lot of good stuff coming up i just today uh i didn't bring them in i i just got a whole shipment of prototype uh new sound hole covers 
a new tailpiece, some other decorative embellishments for cigar box guitars, all laser cut from thin aluminum so they could be easily uh, painted and screwed on to your cigar box guitar to give it some some flair, I dare say, some bling, some flash. So we're trying all sorts of different things in that regard. Anything else? We got anything else, Nick? Not for video wise. All right, well, I think we're gonna play it out. Actually, let me play with this three string banjo here. joined us today. Uh, we hope to see you again next week. Always new books. I ain't gonna lie, there haven't been as many new books in 2021 as there were in 2020, but I am still working on them. All right, let's do this. Oh,